OK, uh, so let's start our uh, second lab. So here I already logged into AppStream and I started ArcGIS Pro. And you can see that Lab 1 is here in the recent projects. Uh, so if you want to open Lab 1 again, you can just simply click uh, this project and you will be able to see your previous um, project. Uh, so for this project, for this lab, uh, we are going to download air photos and also satellite images uh, from ArcGIS Online directly, but from different resource. Um, in our previous labs, um, I will ask students to download data from USGIS or AWS directly. But since this, <laughs> this semester we are uh, teaching online, so I think that might be a little bit hard for us to download data from USGIS. Uh, so still you can find out those tutorials uh, from my YouTube channel. So if uh, you're interested to download data from USGS or from AWS directly, so you can check those tutorials. So for this lab, I just want to give you a simplified version that we are going to download uh, the photos and also images uh, from within ArcGIS Pro. So let's click uh, to create a new project. So we are going to use a map template again. Okay, um, so let's still uh, choose where do we want to create uh, this uh, folder for this project. So I'm going to choose OneDrive again. So I choose Browse. Uh, and uh, so on ArcGIS on, on AppStream is a little bit tricky. So you need to find out the folder that is called AppStream user folder. Uh, so if you have C driver and do not, if you don't have D drivers, I believe that is something you need to find out a folder called AppStream users. Uh, so here my AppStream user is in my D drive. So I click D drive and I find out those one, this one, so Fulton user. So that is the folder that contains all the, um, all the connection to your OneDrive. And then Again, still a little bit tricky, so go to My Files. OK, here. So here you can see OneDrive is here. Again, using OneDrive is highly recommended. So if you have hard time in connecting to your OneDrive, you can still use a home folder as long as you are able to uh, retrieve your data from AppStream. OK, so here I'm going to use OneDrive and files. And here I'm going to uh, use my uh, folder that I created last week for the last lab. And now you can see my lab one folder is here. It's a little bit tricky because now, because this is online class, we use AppStream. Uh, however, if we are using our desktop version, so that will be easier. Okay. And again, I'm going to just right click. I'm going to create a new folder and I call it lab two. So I will put everything that is already exists. Okay. I'm not sure why it already exists. So I just call it lab two V2. And OK. And my project name, I call it Lab2. So next time when I open ArcGIS Pro, so it will be showing up here. OK, I create. OK, it took a few minutes uh, so that to start ArcGIS Pro. And once again, so here we are in the map view. So you can see here we are opening one map that has a basic map. And on the left side, those are the contents. And on the right side, those are the catalog. OK, so if you open folder and you can see the lab to folder is now created. Uh, if for some reason that you mess up your view, you can always go to view. And you can just reset your panels, pens. OK, so by doing that, you will be able to um, find out your catalog pen and also your contents pen. And also you can open those individual catalog pen and also ca um, content pen beneath the view. All right, 
So let's first download an uh, air photo. So in this case, please go, I'm going to portal. And again, so the first tag my content contains all the data that I uploaded to ArcGIS Online and and also the group that have joined. So what I want you to do is that you go to all portal. OK, so this is where you can search all the data that are shared by other ArcGIS users. OK, so you can find out the data that is shared by our, all ArcGIS users. Uh, so I want you to tap. So here you're going to download one air photo that I uploaded earlier. So tap image in Harrisonburg and hit enter. OK, uh, so depending on the time that you are looking at the results, so you may see that, OK, so the, the results will look like different. So please make sure that you are looking Download. You're looking for this one image in Harrisonburg. Uh, there might be some images that upload have the same name, but make sure that you are downloading the data that the older is me. So this is my GMU email underscore GMU, and which was modified in this year. So I uploaded this one last year in 2019. And uh, let's drag this one to our map. OK, and now you can see we just uh, downloaded one air photo to ArcGIS Pro. And that is on top of this um, uh, base map. So if for some reason that you are not zoomed into this image, you can just right click this image. And you can see that here, zoom to layer. So zoom to layer is highly, highly <laughs> Uh, useful. So every time we want to zoom to the to a specific layer, you can just right click and zoom to layer. OK, uh, so now you can see this is an, a high resolution area photo. So if you uh, zoom in and you can see the roads, um, the houses. OK, um, and then I want See if we go to the appearance here. Right now, you can you can see as I said during the lecture. So we are using three bands to to display colors. So the red band, we are using reflecting the in the first band, which is the red color red color band. Um, for the green band, so we are displaying the second band, which is a green wavelength um, band. Uh, we are give them the green color. And for the third band, which is normally the blue band, in this case, we are giving them the blue, uh, blue color. So we are display blue in blue, uh, green band in green, and also red band in red. So that we have a true color image. Uh, so if you go to the appearance, and here if you click this drop down list, so depending on that, how many bands um, this photo or image has. So you can choose uh, to display different uh, color combinations. So here we're using a natural color image. And but ArcGIS Pro now can tell that, OK, for this uh, air photo, there are actually four bands. So the fourth band is in the near infrared. So if we choose color infrared, OK, so now we have a fourth color image where you can see now we are displayed the fourth band in red, which is near infrared. The first band, which is red in green and the second band, which is green that in blue. And we just drop uh, the third band, which was uh, which was blue band. OK, so now we have fourth color image and you can see on fourth color image, uh, the vegetables are displayed in red. OK. Uh, so it's it's pretty cool. And next, I want you to check some other information that we have learned during the lecture. So for example, the coordination system, uh, the number of bands, and also spatial resolution. So for example, you may ask, well, OK, so how do I know that how many bands are there? So if you right click uh, the layer, and if you go to the properties, 
OK, uh, if you go to mental data and you can see the mental data, I believe is empty because I uploaded the data and I didn't type anything when where I was uploading. So it's it's not the best practice. So if you are sharing data with others, so uh, um, it's always the best practice to provide some descriptions, credits, uh, license information, etc. So we will see a uh, and good example later, but here is not a it's not good example. And if I go to resource, all right. So this is uh, the information that are pretty important. So uh, first, you can see where the data is uh, located, and also the unit. Okay. So you can see right now the unit is U.S. food. Okay, and now, if you expand the Rust information, you can see, okay, so we have four bands, okay? So we have four bands. And the cell size indicate the spatial resolution so that the cell size in terms of length is one foot, okay? Is one foot or, or foot, U.S. foot, okay? So the spatial resolution is one U.S. foot. Uh, if you look at the other information, like the um, spatial, if you check the, the band metadata, so you can see we do have four bands, but the band metadata is not that useful. So it's just simply one band that is one, uh, the second band is two. Uh, if we check the spatial reference, okay, and now you can see for this air photo, it has PCS and GCS. The GCS is NAD 19083 HRN, so that's a GCS. And for the PCS, so hopefully now the PCS will sound familiar to you. So the PCS is using State Plan Virginia North. Okay, State Plan Virginia North. And the reason is because this airport is located in Harrisonburg, and Harrisonburg is in the northern Virginia. So if you use state plan Virginia North, so that will have that will have the least distortion. Okay, so that is the spatial resolutions of the coordination system. So uh, state plan Virginia North, and the spatial resolution is one feet okay so each cell represents one feet in terms of the lens all right uh, so that is a uh, look at the air photos and also how we can put the data that from uh, get data that from other uh, user that shared with us um, if you want to know where the data right now is saved so you can go check the data source and you can see okay so that is right now where this air photo is saved okay so that is on the upstream so you can see that is not currently not in our project folder so if you check project you can see uh, our project folder is empty so for example if you want to export this air photo to our project folder I'll save that one to our project folder. What you can do is that you can go to data and you can export the raster data. Okay, so you can export the raster data. Uh, so you can see by default, it will be saved to our project folder and it will use the same uh, coordination system by default. Okay, and let's try to export. Okay, and now you can see now the data has been exported successfully. So now if you go to your catalog, and I think if you refresh your lab two folder, and you can see, okay, so now the data is exported into your um, uh, local project folder and also added to our layer again. Okay. Yeah, so this one is exported into our current project. 
So just in case you, you find something that interesting and online that is shared by other users and you want to save that one to your own uh, local folder and you can try use this export raster function. Uh, next, let's take a look at the satellite images. So the most famous one is Landsat images. So let's go to uh, favorites. Oh, sorry. Uh -huh. Favor let's go to the Living Atlas. Remember, Living Atlas is maintained by S3. And so if you expand the category, you can go to the imagery. And so you can see if we base map imagery, multi-spectral imagery, and also the other type of the imagery. So let's go to multi-spectral imagery. So here there are a lot of uh, data sets that are available. And so for example, if you check this one, the Landsat GLS multispectral, you can see the owner is ASRI. OK, so ASRI maintained uh, those data set. And it was modified still in 2019. OK. Um, and there are a lot of data set that are available. So let's just search Landsat. So we want to narrow down to the Landsat products only. And now you can see now we have those Landsat. OK, uh, so we have those images and layers. And also we have those maps. OK, um, so let's drag the multi-spectral Landsat imagery uh, to our project. OK. Uh, so now you can see the, the Landsat, because that is on top of the uh, air photos, so we can now no longer see the air photos. OK, so if you want to display the air photos, you can just simply drag that one above the Landsat image. And now you can tell the difference. So um, for the Landsat images, you can see the spatial reference is pretty low. And for the air photos, the spatial reference is very, very high. OK. So now you can tell the difference. And let's look at um, the properties of this Landsat image. So if you right click and go to the properties. OK, uh, so let's first check the mentor data. So this is the best practice. You can see the data is maintained by S3. So uh, they have very detailed information. So they have the tag and they have a summary. OK, uh, so this is the, from Landsat 8 is updated daily. Um, and also the license information and you can use view the summary and also the term of the use and also credits. OK. Uh, if we go to the source, you can see it is in meters. OK, so the unit is in meters. And the location is on the ArcGIS server, so it's not saved in our local disk. And if we expand the raster information, you can see the cell size is 30. So that means that um, for, for this Landsat image that we are viewing right now, the spatial resolution is 30 meters. OK, the spatial resolution is 30 meters. And this lens set has the image has three bands. Okay, it has three bands. Um, let's look at the spatial reference. Uh, it also has a PCS 
and also JCS. So the JCS is WJS 1984, which is the most common uh, JCS. And for PCS, that is also the WJS 1984 Web Mocator uh, PCS, which is also another very popular PCS uh, um, coordination system. So if you're uh, interested in, OK, so which bands uh, we are looking at? So right here, you can see the red band is showing the short wave uh, infrared and also green band is this uh, so we're displaying near infrared in green and also display the blue band in blue okay um i think that's pretty much about this lab so i think the lab is one uh, look at the raster data especially the air photos and also satellite images in arcgis pro two um and see how we can uh, download the data from the all portal, so which is the uh, data that is shared by other ArcGIS users, all from the Living Atlas, which is maintained by Asri. So, so Living Living Atlas uh, has high quality data. And if you are also still interested, you can go to live livingatlas.arcgis.com, and you can see what data they have. So, for example, Landsat. OK, and so you can see this is the data that we just viewed in ArcGIS Pro. And they have very uh, detailed explanations. And also they host the data, uh, the data on AWS. So if you are, uh, if you have an AWS account, and also you can actually download the data from AWS S3 bucket directly. So you can check my other YouTube um, tutorials, see how you can download data from uh, USGS website all from the AWS. Okay, so here uh, those you can see the more detailed band information about the data set. Uh, we can see the spatial resolution is 30 meters and also we can see the number of bands and also the wavelengths for different uh, bands.